population growth is also impacted by the age structure of a population. So not all organisms in a population contribute equally to population growth. Some reproduce more than others. So it's useful to take into account individuals that have different reproductive capacities, um, which most often depend on differences in age. So the age structure of a population is the number of individuals within an age group or category of the population that you're studying. So a population in which most individuals are past their age of greatest reproduction because for some reason young are not surviving, for example, or a population mostly composed of individuals younger than this age because older individuals are not surviving, won't increase as rapidly as one dominated by individuals uh, with great reproductive output. So for example, in this figure, this is the age structure of men and women, males and females in France, compared to the age structure in India. And you can see that there's a fairly even distribution between individuals um, in the young ages, the reproductive ages, and the older ages, and then it declines as we get past 70. In comparison, in India, it's more of a pyramid-shaped age structure, and you have a lot of individuals in their reproductive years. And so in a structure that is pyramid shaped for age structure, you get a very rapidly increase, increasing population size. So understanding the age structure of a population can be really important for things like commercial fisheries. So this example shows you the age structure in Pacific rockfish populations in fished and unfished waters. And harvesting the larger and older individuals, as you can see here, reduces the population's capacity for growth and jeopardizes the stocks because your fishing targets these older individuals, which are the only individuals that can actually reproduce, leaving you with a large proportion of individuals that are not of reproductive age. Another example of this is with the orange ruffy population. So the orange ruffy is this long-lived commercial fish from New Zealand. It was very popular fish in the 1980s and 1990s. It's a delicious, subtle white fish. And these fish live to 150 plus years, but their age of matur maturity is 30. And they have really low fecundity, which means they don't produce that many young um, in comparison to other fish species. So the commercial fishery targeted these bigger, larger, older fish by deep trawling, and it really decimated the population. You can see here we have 19, uh, about 1910, and around 1985, 90, the stocks just collapsed to the point that in 2000, um, there were very few reproductive individuals, and this fishery was actually shut down and did start to recover after overfishing of these older individuals was stopped. Different organisms exhibit different survivorship curves. The three types of survivorship correspond to patterns of mortal mortality, whether that's late in life, even throughout life, or it's concentrated early in life. So the type one curve has most mortality late in life. And this is the type one curve here. And you can see that's reflective of a human population. Large animals such as elephants and whales also show type one curves. The type two curve is consistent with levels of mortality that remain constant throughout life. And birds and many small mammals show this type of curve. Type 3 curve shows high mortality at the earliest stages of the life cycle. So small herbaceous plants and small animals such as mice, insects, um, and other organisms that grow fast and reproduce early show these type 3 types of survivorship curves. And there are two main types of reproductive strategies, R strategists and K strategists. So our strategists tend to have a lot of offspring, they have early reproduction, 
they have frequent reproduction, typically they have a short lifespan, and it's broadly related to these patchy resources and typically in a very unpredictable environment. In comparison, the K strategists have few offspring, typically have delayed reproduction, and the reproduction is infrequent. They have a relatively long lifespan, and it's broadly related to more predictable types of environments, and they often have population densities near the carrying capacity. These two strategies reflect an evolutionary trade-off. A reproductive individual has access to a finite amount of resources and can invest either in many inexpensive young, such as the R strategists do, or few well-provisioned offspring, like the K strategists do. Depending on the combination of physiology and environment, natural selection in a given set of circumstances may favor one strategy over the other. However, R and K strategists represent the opposite ends of the continuum in a reproductive pattern, and many species lie between these two extremes.